What's good? What's good? What's good, everybody? Michael Lauder here from CarpetExpertBlueprint.com. On the last job of the day right now, we have a drop room. I did the bedroom already. We're in a living room here, and this is step-by-step -step how to install carpet. Your life has to be incredibly boring to stick around for the bottom of this video, but I'm going to show you every single step. How to set tack strip, how to set a reducer strip, how to burn doorway seams, how to unroll the carpet, how to stretch the carpet, and everything you could possibly need. So let's dive right into this now. We are going to start by setting the tack strip on this wood subfloor. First things first. Toss the strips around the room, so you're ready to rock. Next, we're going to start setting them in. Make sure the nails on the strips are angled towards the wall. That's what's going to hold the carpet in place. Me personally, I use a hammer to break my tack strip rather than cutting them. It's faster and more efficient. Snip that off. Keep the tack strip roughly a quarter inch from the wall. That's going to give you a good tuck on everything there. going to work our way around the perimeter of the room until everything is covered. Utilizing every bit of strip. Like I said, just make sure the nails are angled towards the wall. There's little cheater arrows as well. You could use those to know that you're setting them in the right way. Leave a quarter inch gap. Make your way all the way around the room. So we can go ahead and set the pad. Unroll the carpet and get it stretched in. exciting part about this being live if I mess up you will also learn how to do repairs on carpet but this being a drop room kind of hard to mess this up so this is the ideal video for you DIY types that are tired of dealing with contractors not showing up and you decide to knock it out yourself Got an old phone cord here, and since those are pretty much obsolete, we will leave that on the carpet. And for some crazy reason, they do want one. The new phone company can have that installed for them since this is a rental and they'll be having new utilities set up here. Now, this strip I actually set back a little bit more because there's a seam in the plywood there. And just for efficiency purposes, I'm gonna set it back a little bit just to make sure it grabs properly rather than breaking out sinker nails and all that fun stuff. Jobs like these, we like to go, go, go. Because they're set up for volume and not necessarily your traditional residential installation. 
All right, tack strips are set around the room. Quick trick I want to show you here. One of these nails missed, now typically you would just grab another nail and set that in place, or you can use your pad stapler since this is a wood sub floor. Throw a couple staples in it, grabs and holds. So that is a quick trick. If you're lazy like me, you don't want to get up and grab nails out of the bag. Now, let's get you some padding down. See if I can get you a decent shot here. Roll the carpet out of the way. First shot down, I'm going to cut it with a knife. I'm going to get it lined up with the tack strip over on the side here. I'll get you a close up on that so you can see what's going on. we usually run into when DIY types are putting in their own carpet. One, they put the padding in upside down, I don't know why, but you should have a netting or a sheen on the top there. That's what helps the carpet slide over top of it when you're doing your stretching. And you wanna make sure you got a nice hairline gap in between your tack strip and the padding there. So that way, when you stretch, it doesn't push it up onto it there. So now we're gonna staple the perimeter. Right here I have a floor vent, so you want to cut that out. It's real easy when you're doing this to cover those up, forget about it, and then once the carpet's installed, it's a pain in the butt to cut through the carpet and the pad to find the exact location. Staple around that for security. We're going to trace the padding from this bedroom. Get that out of there. Staple those together. Now we're going to trim it in. So the first shot's down. The room is under 12 feet wide, so we're just going to need two shots of pad. Then we can go ahead and unroll the carpet and start stretching it in. I'll get there. Let's trim this other side here.
Now in this particular case, we have the carpet in the room already. Usually we would pad everything and then bring the carpet in, but just the layout of the house is a little bit easier to have it in the room, ready to go. So I'm gonna move this onto the piece that we just laid out. We have our second shot cleared and ready for pad. I missed a nail there, amateur hour. And I'm gonna lay the second shot down now and we're gonna staple that together and get ready to install. Now, if the padding doesn't go the full length of the room, not a big deal. It's really easy to seam together. And you don't have to worry about messing anything up. It is foolproof, so. Got our first shot down, we'll grab the pad downs. Second shot, we're going to cut the excess off. We're going to get this out of the room, and I'll show you how to seam the pad together so you can unroll the carpet. So we got an overlap right now where we ran short and filled in with the second piece. We are just going to trace that out. And like I said, you don't have to be too precise with the pad. It's pretty forgiving. section out. Now we got to get all this stick together and we want it tight and we don't want any curls in it because if we unroll the carpet and drag it around it's going to cause bubbles under it, a bunch of headaches you don't want to deal with. So we're going to do it, attempt to do it right the first time. Just zigzag some staples down it. Good there. Now we're going to go the length of the seam. In theory, we're going to turn it around, do the other half of this. From there, we're going to do the perimeter, trim it in, and reload our staples. So we're good there as well. Now let's do the perimeter of the room so we can trim it in and get down to some of the main parts of the installation here. So right here, get you a little bit closer. We have a doorway to a hallway here. So I am just making a couple of release cuts. 
Gonna trim to the tack strip right here to get this section out of the way. So I already installed the hallway on this one. get a fresh blade it's starting to dull out that's key to trimming pad too if you have a dull blade it's a pain to trim in clean you get little chunks flopping off every which way and it is no fun just like we did in the other doorway just cut a fresh line to both of them staple that down and go ahead and close this now trim around this part of the texture See, and this is why I like doing time-lapse videos. Because some of this stuff is just tedious and ties everything up. But let's hammer it out step-by-step step for anybody that wants to do their own job. We won't miss any details on this. Now right here, I'm in the kitchen doorway. I'll try and get you a better shot of this. So we're gonna put a threshold right here. So we're gonna trim the padding to right before where we're gonna set the threshold. Now, if you're new to this, you probably wanna set your threshold first, just so you know exactly what to trim to. But we've done this a few times, so we know how to make the line. So boom, we're cut to the sheet vinyl in the kitchen. We're gonna put a threshold here and we'll show you how to do that in one second. Let's finish trimming out this pad. We'll jump on the threshold. And go from there. Alrighty, so we are done trimming in the room. Let me throw a couple staples in here. Alrighty, let's get this threshold down real quick, see if I can get you a decent angle like that. So on this, can't see it from the one side, but we're butt right up against the baseboard here. I'm just gonna take my snips, mark it at the other baseboard. It should be, cut the size, we're good to go. Let me take some nails. And get this secured to the floor. Uh, the gripper metal has little preset holes on it, so all I'm doing is dropping the nails right into those holes. Every few holes, you don't have to fill every one. Just enough to make sure it's nice and secure to the ground. So when you stretch into it, it doesn't come loose. Holds nice and secure, and you're good to go. After a little test, you can just grab it by this lip. 
give it a little wiggle. If it has any movement, you better add some more nails. I actually do have a little movement right there. So we're gonna add one more. And we are good. Let's get this carpet unrolled and get it installed. So to avoid damaging the walls that are freshly painted, you can start the carpet at an angle or sideways even since it comes 12 foot wide. You don't want to try and unroll it 12 foot piece directly on the 11 foot width because you will destroy the freshly painted walls. So if you do it like this, there's plenty of room. We're going to go ahead and get it all loose and unrolled. Then we're going to back roll it. So you just pick up one end. Back roll it so you have one half right on top of the other. Kind of see this bundle I got going on right here. Not getting the best view from the corner. But basically got it all loose. And I just kind of rough fold everything so it's nice and manageable for me to grab a corner at a time and spin it around, get it situated where I want it. Get you set up right there. And take your time when you're spinning it. This is where it can dig into the padding and tear it and move it and create some issues. So if you don't take your time and have a little finesse working with it, it can create some headaches for you on your install. So I got the width set up about where I want to be. I'm going to pull it straight down to this other wall. you back just a little bit and same thing with this part just take your time pulling the pieces out so we don't scrape the walls all up and if you go slow watch your corners you should be okay if you're all aggressive with it, you're going to leave scratch marks everywhere and someone's going to be upset. All right, we are good to go. So, I'm gonna tap out some bubbles. It's all rough laid out about where I need it on every single wall. I'll take you around the perimeter here just so you can get an idea. So I got about four inches, four to five inches up every single wall. So let's go ahead and start stretching it in. I'm gonna show you a couple different tricks here that you can use to make your life easier on your installs. Now, not everybody's gonna agree with that, and that is fine. The key is to make it as simple as possible so anybody can do this. We got a kicker, got my knife. We're going to start cutting it in. So 
So right here we have our threshold to the kitchen. I am gonna partially set up the room. So I'm basically splitting it in half right now. I'm gonna start with the reducer, just cause I feel like it. Let's see if I can get you a close up on this so you can see what I'm doing here. All right, so this is a tap down gripper metal. We wanna tuck the carpet into this channel here, tap it in, then we're gonna tap the metal down with our hammer. So I'm gonna take my knife, take your time with this. This isn't the easiest thing, but we're just gonna run it right along the top of the metal. I'm gonna come back this way. All right, so it's cut to the edge of the metal. I'm gonna use the back of my knife. You could use a tuck knife, a chisel, a five in one. There's a number of different things you could use for this. But you're just gonna tuck that edge into that gripper metal. Now once it's in there, everybody's gonna love this part. So you tap that in, and most guys are gonna say, use a rubber mallet, and you should. But just take your hammer, tap that down. Like I said, we're all about efficiency on this video. All right, so our metal is set. Now we have about eight more feet of wall on this half of the room. We don't want to get crazy with the kicking over here. All you have to do is just set it on the tack strips. Nice and easy. So to set it up nice and easy, take your kicker and you just lightly tap it on. Nothing crazy there. Just enough to have the carpet grab. Pull in place for you. Now, being that this is most likely targeting the DIY individual, you're not going to have a carpet wall trimmer because it's fifty dollars, and why buy that for one or two jobs? You're going to use your knife. The easiest way to do it is cut two to three foot sections so when you pull it back, it doesn't create pressure popping it back off the strip. And just trim it slowly. Watch those fingertips. Do not cut your fingertips off. Boom. So finish down this wall. All right, so we got the metal set in place, carpet secured into it. We trimmed and secured the carpet to the rest of that wall. Now we are on the opposite wall directly across from it. Make a cut right here. Right around this door jam, just so everything can flow freely. I'm gonna come down here and make my corner cut. Now this wall, we're gonna throw a hard stretch on it. So we're gonna put a little more force behind it when we stretch it in. That's what's gonna make it nice and tight and pull all the bubbles out for us. And we will be good to go. Keep the kicker head about two inches from the tack strip. And when you kick, it will push the backing onto the tack strips and lock it into place when it pulls back. So 
with that wall set. Now we're gonna come to the wall in between these two. So here's the first one we set. Here's one we just stretch across. You might be able to see little bubbles right here. We are gonna kick those up with some force now too. Just making little cuts around my doorways. And trim this down just a little bit to make it manageable. Same thing, we're gonna give it a good hard kick on this wall too. Officially, one half of the room is stretched on and tight. Now we got to trim it in so we can tackle the second half. Same thing, take on two to three foot sections, make your little release cut, trim it down. Always be aware of your fingertips because it is real easy to get comfortable and then slice the tip off. And that will wreck your day especially if you do it right. Cut into this ugly doorway threshold here. And when you're trimming it in, you want like just under a quarter of an inch really in excess. That'll give you enough to tuck it down and have a nice clean finish. And if you have any strings, always catch those with your knife. Like I said, this is why I do the time-lapse videos it is very tedious but if you have a wall trimmer and things like that it can speed things up like I said who wants to invest that if you are the DIY guy or gal and you're gonna do this once or twice get yourself a knife kicker you can get them used even save some money knock it out and be proud of that project you took on all on your own So half of the room is officially 
done. Now we need to stretch on the other half. So just give you an overview here. So we got that first half set. Now we're gonna come down here, stretch on the other half, and we can get pretty aggressive right off the bat with the stretching because we got a 20 foot room here. So we wanna make sure it's nice and tight. So I'm gonna do, actually let's get a close up on a corner cut for you here. So push it up nice and tight up against the wall. Take your knife, cut out at an angle there. And then this right here, we wanna make a straight line out this way, but it's kinda of hard to cut from there. So I just pulled straight back, memorize the line, trace that line. Boom, you're done, corner cut. So let's stretch this on. I got some excess here. It helps to cut that down when you're stretching. It's just easier to work with. Holds the tag strip a little more. If it's about two to three inches, real easy to work with. Same thing over here. I'm gonna cut this corner. In. Trim down this wall. Stretch it down. All right, that wall is locked on and set. You wanna make sure you crease it on as well. Just to make sure you're secured on there. Then over here, this is actually the same wall we started on with that doorway threshold. I wanna finish securing that in place. And there's a wall we're just going to give nice, easy kicks onto just to secure it for us. So the whole purpose of the set wall is just to lock it on. Nice and easy, and then you can stretch hard right off of it and pull all the excess out to the opposite. I'm trimming and tucking as I go. All right. Made it to the other end, but we have our doorway right here that we're going to have to to the existing carpet. Finish getting that tucked. All right, we're good there. Now just push down on the carpet. Now, for some reason, the door doesn't clear the carpet. You have to pop it off at the hinges here. I have other videos showing how to do this, but this has tons of height. So we just fold the carpet over. We're gonna open the door over top of it. You see it flops in here and is overlapping the carpet in that room now. We are gonna cover seams in just a second, but let's finish up this room here before we cross that bridge. Oh, 
and don't ever cut like I just cut there. It'll mark up the base boards, but if you've done it enough times, you'll know exactly how to hold the knife without messing up the baseboard, or if the baseboard's already jacked, go for it. going to continue cutting the wrong way to speed things up. It's a little bit faster. But like I said, if it's your first time doing it, you should not do that. And we are officially onto the last section here. So I'm starting down at this doorway. But before I start kicking this, we do have two seams to burn. So I'm gonna plug in the seam iron right now so it'll start heating up for me. We won't have any downtime. We can wrap this room up with the quickness as efficiently as possible. Now this one we're kicking with a little more force. This is our main last stretch. So we wanna make sure all the slack is out with this. And once again, I'm gonna trim it in the wrong way. So like I said, let's just go ahead and wrap this up and get you to the finish line. You know what you're doing at this point. All right, the room is officially stretched and tucked in. You remember earlier though, there was a heat vent that we had to cut the padding out. It's actually located right here. So here is how you cut out heat vents from the carpet without getting crazy. Let's get a fresh blade in the knife first. Feel where the gives at. Definitely a hole right under there. Cut straight across. When you feel your knife stop and you know you're at edge to edge, get your hand in there a little bit, trace one side. Go slow because if you mess up, it's gonna show. Trace the other side. And there is our vent exposed. Now like what I like to do is just fold this right to the edge of where the edge of the vent is. And I'm just gonna run my blade along that. Go slow if you're new at this because it is real easy to slip and cut yourself. Bam, and then they could drop their vent cover on top of that. They're good to go. But let's burn a seam now. So we have two doorway seams we have to do. Seam iron's plugged in, heating up, and by the time I get this cut, it'll be good to go. So I like to cut my sides so they're basically ready to be tucked. Maybe a little bit extra trim to do after you're done, but we wanna be almost perfect on the sides there. So it'll drop right into place. Next, this is a total hack trick, and you should probably use a straight edge if you're new to this. But if you got a little experience in the game, you can do it like this, it's okay. Fresh blade is key as always. I'm gonna fold this top piece back. Carpet has lines on the backing of it. I am gonna trace one of these lines with my knife. I'm doing this is you want a nice clean 
fresh edge so your seam will blend better. Now, lay this right on top of it. Take your knife and trace the edge just by basically making little incisions into the bottom piece. Do not do this with Berbers. This will work on plushes, but Berbers, you will create a total disaster. And I'm gonna put about, I don't know, five, six, seven down this edge here. Now I have countless other videos showing how to do just this on this channel. Now when I fold it back, there's these little slits everywhere. And all I do is play connect the dots with them. So from edge to edge. It's probably difficult for you to get a good view of this, but I'm sure you get the idea of what I'm doing. Get a rough idea of what your seam is gonna look like. Remove any strings that you may have on there. Let's get us some seam tape. All right, so when you're taping your seam, have the tape about two inches high this way. Come straight across and cut it so it's about two inches hefty on the other side. Set this back a little bit so you get a better view. Now, fold this side under about two inches. Fold the carpet back, stick it under all the way on top of the tack strip. Take this to the other side, fold this under when you get to the edge. Boom, you got seam tape going wall to wall on this. Now we're good to go. We're gonna take our seam iron, which has been warming up and is ready to rock. Now there's gonna be a lot of people that have different styles for this as well, but here's how we're getting down on these doorways. Make sure the back of the seam iron's all the way up against the wall. We're gonna let it sit here. I like to burn mine hot. If you're new to the carpet game or just trying this or whatever, you may wanna set your iron at two and a half, three. I always set mine at four just to get the results fast. So eight to 10 seconds, we're gonna slide it one iron's length forward. And you can even peek in there to see where the unmelted glue is starting. And then just push your fingers back there. Blend it in like that. You could also use a tractor. Maybe I'll bust that out. Nah, I'm not going to bust that on the next one. We're going to keep it all Mike Alder style on this one. So I'm just going to blend it in. Tuck that side. Move an iron's length again. Make sure the backing is touching all the way through. Now there could be times where it just gaps a little bit. You could take your kicker and bump it together, or if it's overlapping, make sure you kind of push them apart a little bit just so that it's backing to backing because you don't want fibers down in there. That's what will make for an ugly seam, and gaps will also make a visible seam, which you don't want. Then when it comes to sliding the iron out, just slowly pull it out and use the backing to keep the tape down. See how I'm doing that? Slide it out when you get to the end. I got a couple of little strings here. We're going to get rid of those. Boom. Seam number one is done. Now, we have one other doorway. Let's get over here. And no lights over here, so let's do our best on the visibility factor. All right, same scenario. We are gonna fold this side back. Get a nice fresh edge to work with. We're gonna mark 
the seam all the way down. Fold it over just like we did on the other one. And we are gonna trace it, connecting all these dots. And like I said, if you're new to this, you can use a straight edge to actually be a guide in between each line. That'll make it much easier on you. So if you don't have a steady hand with a blade, that would be the best way to go about it. Cut this edge a little bit so everything's trimmed up and ready to go. That'll tuck right when I'm done. That should tuck right when I'm done. Let's get some tape and put this together. Same thing. Have it folded under on this side. Take it all the way over to the wall. Take to this side. Wall to wall. And drop it down to get our iron. Like I say, we're going to go eight to ten seconds, then we're going to slide it forward. extra hairs that might be sticking through. And bam, we've officially done every part of the installation on this room here. Burn two seams, set tack strip, did the reducer, stretched everything in, padded it, and we have a finished room that we have to pick up scraps in. So if you hung out with me this whole time, I greatly appreciate that. I hope this video helped. Comment below with any questions about carpet installation. You know I'll create a video for you. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'll see you on the next one.